Hello everybody, this is um, the third part of the video um, on setting up AAA authentication and authorization on this switch. It's a Cisco switch running in GNS3 and we're going to be using um, this Windows 2016 uh, server as radius server. Now in the last video I made a small mistake with the settings. I'm just going to quickly show you how we can sort that out quickly and then I'm going to configure the switch uh, for triple A. Okay, so first I'm just going back into tools um, network policy server. Let's give it a chance to open. There we go. And um, under network policies, we've got these two. Um, Priv15 was for users um, to get uh, privilege level 15 as soon as they logged in. And the user that belonged to this one, uh, Priv1 underscore policy, should get a privilege level of 1 um, when they log in on the Cisco router. So let's double click this quickly. Here by settings, uh, the vendor specific settings, it I originally said was shell colon PRV, there's a missing I there, so I'm just going to select it, edit, um, select it there again, edit, configure attribute, and let's uh, squeeze this uh, I in there, so it's shell colon prov dash LVL equals 15. So when the user um, logs in, uh, they'll be returned this attribute. Well, that attribute will be returned to the router and will give them a uh, privilege level 15. So they'll end up immediately um, in enable mode. Just going to press OK there, OK there. And do the same with this uh, priv1 underscore policy. Settings. Under vendor specific, uh, select it, edit, select it again, edit, uh, configure this attribute, and this has got to be an I. Shell colon P or IV prov dash LVL equals one. Okay, now that that's all done, uh, so out of this uh, Windows 2016 server. So now we're going to configure AAA on the switch. Alrighty, first thing I want to do in global configuration mode is set up our username and password um, that we'll use if the AAA server fails. So that username we said is going to be called just user. So it's username user. Uh, I'm just going to use secret and password P A S A S W O R D. Then I'm going to put an enable secret. Enable secret. One two three four. Okay. Now if we go on the console line, we go line console zero. We want to tell it to use the local username and password to log in. This is just for testing purposes in the beginning. So you type in your login, local. Okay, let's exit there, exit there, exit again. So let's try this uh, user. It's going to be our backup user if AAA fails. So let's see if it works first. You type user, and then that uh, password is just password, P-A-S-S-W-R-D. And we're in, and there we are at user mode. We type enable, and now we put in the enable password one, two, three, four, in. Okay, so now to set up AAA, so we go to global configuration mode, and the first command you have to type in is AAA new hyphen model. In fact, if you just type AAA and press the question mark, you'll see there is nothing else to type except uh, new hyphen model and this enables all the rest of the commands because now if you go triple A you see some other stuff is showing up. Anyway, the first thing you need to do is set up a radius server 
Um, there's a few different ways of doing this, but actually, um, this is the way the CCMP textbook shows you. But it's quite easy if you just dig around to figure out the other ways to do it as well. But I'm going to show the textbook method because it's the same method you're going to see in the exam. So it's a radius hyphen server host. Now you put the IP address of that Windows um, 2016 server is 172.16.0.1. And here's where that shared key comes in, which is 88. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, made some mistake. Oh, you're supposed to put key in front of it. Radius server host 172.16.0.1. Oh, sorry. And then key is 8 dates. And it tells you here that this is the old method of doing it. Um, if you follow those basic instructions at the bottom, it's quite easy to use the other method as well. Anyway, so now we go triple A authentication for login. We're going to use, you see here you can pick your own name for the method. Now if you pick your own name for the method then later you must um, go under line console 0 and line vty0 and 15 and tell it to use that method that you've now chosen, you know one that you've made up. For example you could say AAA authentication login you can say call it method 1 but then that method you must still add it under line console 0 or under uh, line vty uh, zero space 15 if you want it for telnet or ssh but here we're just going to stick with default which m is the method that's built in and we're basically saying the default login method is going to do the following first it must try radius uh, sorry it must try um, group radius again that's another interesting thing you can either specify a group of radius service you see it says word so if you made a group of radius servers, you can specify that group of radius servers here. But if you type the word radius like this, then you don't even need to make a server group. You're just referring to all these radius servers because you can have more than one. So you've got radius hyphen server host uh, 172.6.0.1 key 888a. So that's referring to that server. It's saying, you know, try that server, f server. And if that server fails, then use the local database it's um, the server literally has to be uncontactable if the server returns that your access is rejected then um, the switch is not going to allow you in with the local uh, database and I'll show you that in a second so we've got your AAA authentication login default group uh, first try the radius and if that fails um, then to local okay, let's do it right there And uh, if we exit now and exit again, uh, it's asking us for a username. So let's try the previous one, which was user and password. That's the local username. It's not supposed to work. You see, it says authentication failed. So now we're going to try. Um, this uh, one we did earlier, Cisco. Oh, if you remember correctly, they're both now using the password secret dollar sign dollar sign because Windows um, 2016 was not happy with having a username Cisco and a password Cisco two dollar signs. So we're using we've got two usernames. We've got um, Cisco, which is privilege level 15. When, you, when we log in with that, ultimately we want to end up in enable mode. And then we've got. Uh, net admin when we log in with that we want to get to level 1 but if you've noticed we've only configured authentication so far we haven't configured authorization so it doesn't matter which password we use we're not going to end up in enable mode but uh, let's see so here we type username Cisco and then the password was uh, secret two dollar signs let's see and there we in and you see it didn't take us into enable mode we still have to type en for enable and there it wants the password and we can put in one two three four so we didn't go straight away into enable mode because um, authorization hasn't been set up yet but authentication as you can see has already been set up I've just logged in with the password Cisco and that was fine and now we can log in with the password uh, sorry with the username net admin and 
and password secret dollar sign dollar sign and you see again we are in user mode we're not um, but this one's supposed to be in user mode in any case um, so I have to type in a password to go to enable mode so the next step is to set up authorization so it's triple A authorization auth uh, stop myself out here a second authorization talking and spelling don't work too well for me and we want to authorize the exec and we're going to use the default group radius same as before so the authorization can be done by the radius server and if that's not there use the local um, you can also use if authenticated here which means if the server's off but you've already logged in and it'll still work um, but I'm not going to do that now now the next thing is this AAA authorization as I've done it here will work if you if you come in with um, from outside with like Telnet or something let's try that from my own computer so I haven't tried this before if it fails it fails let's see so this is putty and we're going to try log into the switch on 172.16.0.253 and we're going to try telnet because if you want to do SSH we still need to set up a certificate which we haven't done so it's going to do telnet for now it says username and uh, yeah let's try Cisco and let's try the password S C sorry S E C T dollar sign dollar sign and we straight to enable mode there you see the hash so if you type here we're ready in enable so you can go straight to conf t there we are but if we um, exit that exit that so I'm from my computer again with uh, using putty so my computer is coming in through this cloud if you didn't know and I have Microsoft's uh, KM loopback adapter doing that anyway so now we're going to try with the other username of netadmin so 253 there again coming in with the uh, set telnet because it says that you need a certificate and I haven't done one yet so we say open and now we to try that other one which is um, net admin net min enter and the password is secret s e c r e t dollar sign dollar sign let's see and as you can see we're in user mode so in terms of if someone is coming in with uh, Telnet or um, SSH, if we had the um, certificate configured, it's work. Uh, Triple A is working correctly. However, if we exit this and we exit there, um, let's see what happens. So now we are logging in. This is would be this equivalent of you plugged in with a, your laptop into a console port of a router. So now you're logging in with um, Cisco, which is supposed to give you privilege level 15. Let's see what happens. Cisco, password secret S E C R E T dollar sign dollar sign. And as we see, we're still in user mode. It didn't take us to enable mode. So there's another step we still have to do, and that is. It's a command triple A authorization console. Console like that. Save that command and let's get out of this and see what happens. So now we log in with the username Cisco. And if you come with the password secret double dot sign and you see we are straight in privilege mode so yeah you can just get com t in configuration mode exit that and if we log in with um, our other user net admin n e t a d admin and we type the password secret dollar sign dollar sign there we end up in um, user mode one last thing I'm going to show you before I end, it, end this video is the Wireshark capture. So we're going to right click on this thing. We say OK. There we've opened Wireshark. 
leave that to run for a second. So I'm going to log out of this switch, exit it. Uh, logging in with username Cisco. He's one of our level 15 users. Pass it secret. And we straight into privilege mode. Now let's see what Wireshark captured. So I'm just going to stop the capture. And here in the top we can filter to radius. You type R I D R U S radius, press enter. It's only showing us the radius stuff. So this is the request that went out. Um, to the server and there you can see what port it's using I don't believe there's anything of interest in here um, no nothing specific but what's interesting is what came back from the server because this is source from 172.6.0.1 that's a Windows server and we should be able to see those attributes and um, let's look at this first one there you've got it uh, sorry, you can't really highlight it. But val is equal to shell colon priv dash lvl equals 15. And the other one is here as well. Uh, service type, val login. So these attributes, um, so the radius server, oh sorry, the switch asks the radius server if the person can log in. And then the Windows 2016 servers, uh, radius server returns these attributes which basically give you permission anyway thank you for watching uh, this is the end of my video and i hope you enjoyed it